Hey everybody, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. I'm continuing a really interesting series. The series is called Replacement Singers, Who Did It Better? Next up is Halloween. Of course, you know, you've got Andy Darris, the, the latest singer, you've got Michael Kiske, uh, their middle singer, and you've got uh, Kai Hansen, their original singer. Uh, we're gonna go through them here in a minute, but um, if you wouldn't mind, please like and subscribe to my channel. That would be really cool. Uh, I also have a singing course. It's called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else. You can find it right here at KenTamplinVocalAcademy.com where you can also join my free singing forums with about 25 thousand singers over at my singing forum. So um, now we just did a version of this uh, at KTVA and uh, I did it with one of my students, uh, Gabriela Gunchikova. And I also had a special guest, um, by the way, that it was Halloween's Eagle Fly Free, but Mark Hudson from Dragon Force is actually one of my uh, KTVA vocalists as well. So we did a duet with uh, Dragon Force, you know, Mark Hudson and with Gabriella. You can check that out. I'll put that in the description. You can see how we did. And I wanna just kind of dive right in because you know, there's so much passion that goes into this. And as I've said this before, uh, there's an awful lot that goes into who did it better. It's not just who sang it better. It's, you know, did they have to fill the shoes of someone else with a music that wasn't necessarily written for them per se? Um, did they come from a well-known band with experience or did they come in off the street? That's another big deal. Um, how long did they stay in the band and did they contribute significantly to the creativity process? So I think that's all, these are all really important there's like a lot of stuff and in my very first Van Halen video that I did of these I covered some criteria for this and some some ground rules for for that now by the way I really want to hear your opinion so please post in the comment sections but please post respectfully okay even if you have differences of opinion please share your opinion but do it respectfully I'm gonna dive right in here we go great scream Okay, now, we know this is Kai Hansen. I've heard some of his earlier stuff. I know this was a Vakken thing that was later, um, but I wanna point out some things right away. First of all, it is incredibly difficult to play those kinds of licks and sing like this at the same time, okay? And I already know too that that's one of the reasons that they brought Kiski into the band was so that you know uh, Kai Hansen could focus more on his guitar and on making the band more intricate, more powerful. And I know that these guys were kind of called the with the Big Four or something I forget, but they were sort of the fathers of, of power metal, and maybe they are the fathers of power metal. So they had a precedent they were setting, and they also had you know an, an integrity to keep up, you know something that they had had to uphold. Um, that they just couldn't, you know, couldn't walk away from. They had to kind of get better and better. So right out of the gate, I want to hear this scream one more time because I want you guys to really listen to how awesome walking out on stage and doing this. So I'm just like, Wham! <laughs> I just think that's cool. Okay, now we heard some of the uh, other parts, so I don't wanna um, do too much here, but I wanna get into, uh, let's see here. Um, let me move it up, so those Starlight Red the Sky. Uh, check this out. All right, now, hard act to follow, guys. Come on, I mean, I know they've got like, 
uh, some really high vocals, some really high hard guitar parts to, to play and stuff. They're spot on. Man, Kai Hansen is spot on. All of his notes are spot on. Big, fat, round voice, huge arena kind of sound. I mean, he's just throwing down hard and they are crushing it. So this is a hard act to follow, folks. So, um, you know, when we start to talk about uh, Kiski and some others of the Andy Darius later, but wow. Now, I want to point something out too to um, some of my uh, singing friends out there. You guys, um, we talk a lot about technique and you know, he's not belting those notes up really high like a Bruce Dickinson. And I want to be clear about this. So when he goes, ah! right, that's all reinforced falsetto with a lot of distortion behind it. In fact, let me play this part again one more time so you can hear this. This section here, you can really tell he's not doing what Bruce would do. And I know they're kind of a little bit in the same camp. Um, people would sort of, you know, think of Iron Maiden. This, these guys are a little bit more on the speed metal side. So, um, but but Bruce would pull the sound up, you know, yeah, and he's ha, he's got a, a, a heavy duty reinforced falsetto. Check it out. Let me actually, let me go a little bit before that. Sorry about that. Check this out. Here we go, right here. More than that, farther than that. Here we go. Let's try this one more time. One more time. Here we go. Sorry. Yeah. Right, it's all really kind of head voicey stuff. So, but it's still really tough to do. It's not only tough to do, but there's another component to this. When you sing like that, it can atrophy your chest voice, your belting or your call register. And so you get this big continental drift, this kind of ripping between your range of how high you can go up in your chest register and you start to default more and more to this kind of sound in your head voice. So pretty tough to do, pretty tough to maintain, pretty tough to keep good vocal health. It just makes me want to do it. <laughs> Guys, he's hitting all the notes, he's playing all that guitar stuff, all singing, playing at the same time. Man, two thumbs straight up, I don't, man. Again, I know that when Kiski joined the band, you guys can correct me on this stuff, I'm not sure how accurate I am, on, but I think he was like 18 years old, replacing him as an 18 year old? Crazy stuff, a lot of 18 year olds these days, they call them emerging adults, still living at their parents' house, trying to figure out what they wanna be when they grow up, and Kiski joins the band at 18. That's pretty amazing. So let me let me move this up a bit here, but I mean, I've got I've recorded a few things, so. But I, I just wanna, you know, if you guys get a chance, go back and check out this old Vakken performance, because it is just stunning. He did a phenomenal job, just crazy great. Right? Okay, here we go. Now, for me, he's a little more on the Dickinson side, okay? Kiski kind of has more of that belting upper mid register, and, and this is the song that we covered that I want you guys to check out in the description. Just see how we did, man. You know, I think Gabriella killed it. I think Mark Hudson killed it. Um, but I want to point out a couple more things that's really important. First of all, I can only get certain footage and I can only get certain things that publishing companies will allow. So I'm really tried hard to just give everybody a really fair shake of finding the best stuff I could find and not favor anybody above anybody else. 
I had the privilege, um, I was working with a sound engineer at the time, and actually he did more than that, but um, his name is Rudy Gronendijk, and he actually was the uh, the road manager and the um, monitor engineer for this tour. So I think I was with Rudy, hmm, I wanna say it was 89, 88, 89, 90, whenever, whenever Kiski joined the band. So I got to see several of their shows up close, intimate, and personal. That was backstage, side stage, front stage, at the mixing console. I saw five shows in a row, and uh, they were like this every single night. Every night, it was this good, like crazy. And the energy was crazy, and just amazing. So I wanna, I wanna say that the interesting thing about these live performances is, in some cases, like, like Iron Maiden 2, um, Man, maybe the live performances were better, where a lot of times when you hear a band that were playing, you know, stuff off the album, you go, ah, it's not quite like the album. It's kind of like tightrope walking. Did they make it? Ah, no, they fell. Not in these guys' case, man. They really pulled it off. It's amazing. Some can say Now, Keeper of the Seven Keys, I wanna bring this up too. So our criteria, remember, was, um, you know, did they fill the original singer's shoes? And absolutely. Um, did they raise the bar or did they contribute significantly creatively? That was, I think, one of their greatest albums. I know they had like 16 albums and like, I think they've got, man, I, I, don't call me on all this stuff, guys. You guys can help me out and put it in the comment sections. I wanna say they had like, was it eight or 10 gold albums, a couple platinum albums? I mean, they, it's 10 million records sold. These guys had, you know, 16 albums total and then a few EPs and some other things. But this was just a phenomenal success story from, from a German band coming in. One of these guys, you guys tell me, was it the drummer that was also like an auto mechanic or something? I know they went through a lot of member changes, but I mean, these guys came from kind of humble beginnings. They just loved the playing and they they weren't in it for just being rock stars. I mean, they really loved this and wanted to raise the bar of power metal and they did. And I think that's why they're called the fathers of power metal. Very Dickinson. You hear the Dickinson in that? Cool. By the way, guys, I mean, really, like not a missed note, right? Not a single missed note. Everything is spot on, the band's spot on. You're not hearing any clunking, you know, any bum notes anywhere. Tiny little, tiny little crack there, but nothing to write home about. Even the harmonies are spot on, right? Now I'm just make it your own way. So he does go into a head voice like that, kind of like Dickinson does, where it's kind of a mixed voice sort of thing. And the way you guys can practice, just right, you used to just. Instead of trying to pull all that mass up, it's just right. You can get in through the passaggio without hearing the register break and use your head voice to do your work for you up top and then come back down in your chest as you can open up into the sound, into a chest resonant sound. And that's precisely what he's doing. And he's, you know, like both him uh, and Kaisa, they've never had vocal lessons. That's amazing to do this um, as what I would call a street singer without really understanding how to get in and out of the passaggio like that. Pretty good stuff, man. Is 
the end. Now on that note, fly! It's fly! He's not pulling chest and he's not pure fly! He's not pure head voice. He's mixing really cool here, guys. Check this out. It's like fly! Even I cracked, right? Fly! Right, he's really mixing the sound, and this is really hard to do. Here, let me get, let me get back to this again. Here we go. Okay, right here. Here we go. Fly someday. Right, it's pretty good stuff, man. Now we go, da! On our version, check out our version, it's pretty cool. But all right, now let's get to Andy Darius. Here we go. Now I'm gonna turn the volume up because it's a little lower than the original or than the other tracks that we were hearing. But um, I wanna point out, it's I think it's a half step lower already. Really crappy recording. So again, it's really not fair to grade these guys and all these recordings. So if you guys know of a better recording that maybe I wasn't allowed to use because we couldn't allow, you know get, get them to give us a green light to use it, please post it uh, in the comment sections of your favorite parts it's, or, or recordings or concert or whatever. <laughs> Now, a couple things I want to point out. He's got his energy, his actual overall energy seems a little bit uh, stronger than Kiski. I'd say, to be fair about this, Kai Hansen has a much bigger voice than all of them um, and commands a much bigger voice and is maybe a little bit more... Um, calculated maybe is a good way to say it in the way that he's he makes sure all of his parts are right and kind of even see it kind of working his head even though he had the big glasses on um so this is a little more raw uh I, it's like i said it's just down a little bit in the key and uh but he's still killing it man he's doing a great job by the way um an eagle fly free Right. He's going in an almost an operatic falsetto. Let's back this up, take a quick listen to this. He's not really kind of mixing or belting or bringing any power into the sound. Listen closely, he's, he's defaulting almost entirely to head voice on these parts. See, it's ego fly free, right? He's kind of going back and forth between like a falsetto and a jazz voice, but mostly falsetto. See on that, and just make it ya! Right, even in there, you can really hear a lot of just mostly all entirely falsetto. By the way, it's still really great, so I don't want to say it's not great. It's great. I'm just going back and forth between what I'm hearing analytically because we talked about this this is an uh, analysis a singing tutorial we're going through here talking about replacement singers but but we, we, they're all great <laughs> you know what i mean Yeah, I want 
Now I noticed too, and we all do this as singers live, he sang the verses really heavy, and then when he got some backup, you know, backup singing, he was he backed off the sound and energy in the sound to give him a chance to recoup because he knows he's gonna go up again or he just needs to get control of the breath. Take a listen, you'll see what I mean. So do you hear how much lighter he's singing there compared to these parts here? Watch. See what I mean? Eagle fly free. Ray's kind of defaulting again ahead, voice. And I don't know why I knew it. Just make it I mean, it's not that much higher, and he hit some higher notes, so. But he did it twice. Here's the end. Now when you got, ah, that's a mix of face. And you ah, yeah, 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 because he does a blues like instead of, ah, you know, I was waiting for this like epic ending, whatever. And again, man, you can't grade everybody on one show and some crappy recording and whatever. I don't know. I, I haven't got to see him a bunch of times, so I don't know. But, I, and I do know that Kiski was a monster every time I saw him. And, and then, yeah, Kai just playing guitar and be able to sing like that is absolutely incredible. So guys, share your thoughts and comments with me. It's gonna be a little controversial because I know that um, there's a lot of different, you know, man love for each guy. And respectfully so. I mean, these guys, like I said, they're, they're, they're basically the fathers of power metal. Like, and just look them up and see all the stuff they've done. It's absolutely phenomenal. So thank you for joining me. I've got uh, quite a few more of these coming your way. Um, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to check out, I have a singing course if you're interested in this kind of singing. I think a good example is looking in, in the description, how did Gabriella do singing something like this? How did Mark Hudson do? They're both KTVA vocalists. You tell me if this is something that is worth looking into. So thank you for joining me. Until next time, peace out, and don't forget to check out my next video.